There we go. Yay! Hello. Hello. And welcome to another Skit Twins podcast. <gasps> Wait, no. We have to start it properly. This. Oh, no. I was going to make a noise first. Okay. <laughs> this is the Skit Twins podcast. Hello and welcome to the Skit Twins podcast. Yeah, that's, that sounded professional, apart from the bit at the start where we forgot about it. Just skip through that. <gasps> Tell you what, if you wanna, if you wanna tweet us or like email us, um, you can, you could do the. You could bit. be the voice of the Skit Twins podcast. Yeah. Oh, that would be we could unreal. do well if we get enough people. We could do it and <laughs> do different people every week. <laughs> oh, that would be so cool. That would be the yeah. audience participation. Yeah, that would be you amazing. can tweet us a video at Skit under slash Twins. Or at skit underscore twins. Yeah. And I can just take the audio out and put it on. Or you can email us. We have an email, which is skittwins at gmail.com. That, yeah, that also. Do you want to say it a wee bit slower? Because I think that was too skit fast. Twins at gmail.com. Use your BBC Northern Ireland voice. Yeah, that's important. <laughs> I do that all the time. <laughs> I don't do it all the time. Not when I'm speaking to you, but if I'm like, if I'm over in England, I will find myself sort of pronouncing things a little bit better yeah you f- you find yourself saying things slower yeah you do slow down a bit and then it's weird you just feel because this is us talking normally right and then now we will now we will talk in our see even there i have to do a transition yeah just talking properly for people to understand you but like it's fine here like I, I, my guide for triathlon, she's sort of getting used to my way of speaking. Like she'll even use some of my words now. Like because yesterday she was like, "Can we slow down a wee bit?" And I was like, "Huh? You said we?" And she was like, "I'm learning all your words now. I'm just using them." <laughs> so yeah, yesterday we did a triathlon in yeah, Dublin. I was gonna say because you said about transitions, so I was like speaking about transitions. Ah, but, smooth. Yeah. So we were in Dublin. We travelled down to Dublin on Friday. I mean the travelling to the hotel was a that was a, an adventure in itself I should do, like honestly i think all visually impaired people if they have to travel somewhere by bus and train and like multiple forms of public transport they should get a medal yeah like, rnib and people like that can you organize that just like a wee gold medal that some just sort says, of i traveled today yeah or some kind of like okay you get a rest day tomorrow you can just chill and not do anything yeah you yeah you have a job but you know what you traveled enough because yeah. it's stressful as like, and whenever we get stressed we start having a go at each other yeah we just because i felt like you weren't helping you felt like i wasn't helping and we were trying to look up maps and look up train times Plus, and tram 3G times in dublin is so slow it's shocking or is because, that just because we have, we're O2 UK? Yeah, technology. because we're UK and then it just, just doesn't work. But yeah, it was, it was tight, it was not tight enough going, but it was, whenever you've been on a bus, on like on several buses from 11am and it's now 5pm. It's actually about half five by the time we got, got there. Yeah, and, and you then, still, you're still an hour away from where you're supposed to be and it's just tired. You're tired, you're hungry. Your you're... battery's on like 32%. <laughs> You need to pee. <laughs> I made it through the whole bus journey without needing to pee. I, like I got off the bus and I was like, I need to go now, but like I didn't have to run. Yeah, it was it was good. Just... But yeah, uh, definitely think there should be medals or like awards for visually impaired people, like the visually impaired awards. VIAs. Yeah. Vias. Yeah, for VIPs. Yeah. You. And then you could That's like cool. give out medals and like wee awards and trophies, and you could be like, "This one's for Joe," and he got a plane the other day to Australia, and he survived. Well done, Joe. Come on up and get. Oh, he's in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> but would you get an award for like using assisted travel and stuff too, or is it just no, for people no, who go it's alone? No, people who do people who go alone, like assisted travel. That's like that's would we count because we're together? I mean, we're both blind, so I mean, we we would be like the team. You know the way there's like oh, so there's like team, team awards, awards too. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got this all sorted. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, we got to Dublin on Friday night, and we yeah we got to our hotel, and we had the most gourmet dinner ever. I think five Michelin star. I think yeah. We had cold beans and oh, cold cold, and cold boiled, eggs. boiled eggs and cereal and, and milk. cereal and milk. Yeah. Yeah, you're jealous. I know you are. Living, can... living the highlight, elite athlete life. There. Yeah. But yeah, it was was a good enough triathlon. I think we 
it didn't start to half ten, and the last triathlon we did, it started at half eight. So we thought, oh, yes, it doesn't lion. start till half half ten. We'll get a lion. Nope. Because nope. we had to be down there at the at the race venue for eight o'clock, which meant like we were there for like half seven. I yeah. Think. <sighs> which kind of sucked, and it was really cold. Yeah. That morning too, and I was like, oh. Flip. It did. It did heat, it did up, heat up, though, up by half ten. Like I was sort of warm enough, but the the liffy wasn't that warm. It was warmer than the lagging was, yeah. definitely. Definitely. It smelled worse, though. Oh, it was It awful. smelled so bad. But I think it's because it was shallower, and then, like, the reeds and stuff were... And then everything just got caught in the reeds oh. at the side and stuff, and you didn't know what you were putting your feet in, to be honest. You just kind of didn't think about it. But now I'm thinking about it, and I'm feeling a wee bit sick. <laughs> and, I, and, and I constantly i am now thinking about how much I swallowed, and I'm like, when's the sickness going to hit me? Because... Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I still don't like swimming. The swim was traumatic and I hated it and I didn't think I was going to make it. I got, I don't even know if I was halfway. I don't know how far I got on like, because you went down and then around a boy and then back up and then out. Yeah. Um, And it was like down towards the first boy. And so it must have been like maybe a quarter of the way through it. And I was like, I actually can't go on. I, I was fine and now I'm not. I just, no, nah, I don't want to do it. And then you did make friends with another kayaker though. I was gonna get to that. The kayak guy was really cool because he was like, "Come on, you're doing really, really well. You're doing really well." I was like, "Another friend," and my guide was great too. She was like, "Judith, come on, you're doing great. You're doing great." And I was like, "You're a great liar, and I appreciate it." Like I, don't, I don't know. I wasn't as much of a mess. I don't think because I didn't. I just didn't speak, and I didn't. I apart from like sarcastic comments to try and lighten the situation. <laughs> But um, I tried just not to stop swimming. I was like, if I stop, I'm not going to start again. Yeah, if I stop, I'm just going to be like, no. Nah. Well, I, I didn't stop swimming in Belfast either, but sort of a case, like more in yeah, in Dublin, Um, I had to do breaststroke a couple of times just to sort of, like, because whenever you're in a wetsuit and you keep your head above the water, the wetsuit kind of chokes you. Chokes you. Um, and then also a wetsuit's quite tight, so it's quite tight in a, like in around your, your chest, so it does restrict your breathing a bit that I way. was all right I did br- we had to stop because our tether came off did I tell you that mm. um it like you know the way we have like these big elastic bands that are tied like around each of our ankles you you know this but people listening I do know. not so no, don't no. look bored um no it's just it, because I was speaking I was telling sorry. a story and you, no tell your story tell your story sorry I thought you were done speaking um but yeah it became untied on Louise's leg and then we had Louise to take... is just guide, by the way. I thought I'd said that. No. Okay. Well, Louise is my guide. Um, she does Ironman races. So... She's class. But anyway, it, it became untied, and then we had to try and tie it again. But that's hard whenever you're like treading water, <laughs> and the Liffey isn't as buoyant as as the lagging. I thought it was. I didn't think it was too bad. I don't know. I don't think it was as buoyant. That's what we but, were saying. Yeah, but... I, did, I just didn't swap someone. And I kept my face above the water. Like, I did try and put it under, but it just sort of ruined my breathing. Like, I had a good breathing pattern going with my head above the water. And I was like, look, I'm moving. And I'm moving at a decent speed. So I'm not going to not gonna affect that. And I think beforehand, I had sort of, like, I convinced myself, you know what? I'm not going to put my head under the water. And me being, like, me, I was just like, you know what? No, I'm not going to put my head under water. <laughs> So I didn't, like, I sort of half put it underwater and then I was like, no, it's just, it's not working for me. <laughs> um, but Annie, my guide, was, she was really good in the swim. I couldn't, I couldn't swim in a straight line yesterday. Like, norm- normally either. I'm okay at swimming. I know that you always veer off to the side. No, no, I've I've actually sort of improved that because in the pool I've been swimming with well, my eyes to. closed. Um, but, yeah, I just couldn't swim in a straight line. I kept on... I was on sort of like the inside so I was near like the center bit of the river where it was cordoned off because you went up one side and came down the other. I was constantly veering into that and then Annie was like, go over here and I was like, oh yeah, sorry. And then, um, but yeah, it wasn't overly well organized because the age group people, so people who aren't elite athletes, um, people who are just doing it for the banter. Um, so they're split into age group categories. So like say under eighteen, eighteen to twenty four, twenty five to thirty, etc. I don't know. I don't know if that's right, but that's sort of they're in age groups. Um, but they came in. I think it was only five minutes after us. No, I'd say it was closer to about maybe. What was ten minutes? I'm gonna max. say yeah, ten was to the fifteen. Because my my swim was half an hour, and I was just before the turning point whenever mm-hmm. they caught up on us. So maybe it would have been five minutes because they caught up on us whenever I was up there. 
doesn't matter, continue. Um, they caught up with us and they were really rude. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they, like everybody knew that it was the Paras that went in before them and they were just, they, I know that from my point of view they were swimming through us, they were getting tangled on the tether that was around my uh, my ankle and Annie's ankle, my guides, and they were swearing at us and telling us that we were slowing them down. It was like, you didn't have to swim through us. Like, we're wearing ca like swim caps that are for specifically, like, that says, like, guide, like, para cap things. And, yeah. And then whenever we were getting out, uh, the marshals were there and they pulled me out. And they were trying to pull Annie out. And we were still tethered by the ankles at this point. So Annie's ankle was up in the air. Oh. And, um... Annie had her arms out to, and the marshal was like just about to grab Annie's hand and then some other woman grabbed his hand and got yanked out of the water, tripped over the tether and almost fell back into the water and she was raging and it was like, the marshal was just like, these are para-athletes, they are tethered together. I was trying to get her out because they're tethered together. <laughs> and then, yeah, but it was sort of, it was handled well because one of the... Yeah, the marshals official, were really good. But yeah, just... yeah. And then one of the official people, rule, pe she was like really high up and she sort of, she was in charge of the rules and stuff like that. She uh, stopped some of the swimmers getting out of the water because they had just, they didn't have any respect for letting us out. <laughs> um, so that was nice, but that was the swim, um, the bike. I have some stories about the swim. Okay, do you tell, tell some stories about the swim? I got punched in the face by some... Um... I just got splashed. I don't think I got punched. Like they, they ripped my goggles off because they were like p swinging their arms around, and then whatever way they were bringing their elbow out, uh -huh. it caught my goggle and pulled it up like that. And I was kind of like, "Excuse me, <laughs> pretty sure that's illegal." Um, and then it's not though. Is it not? <laughs> no, because it's a draft legal race. You like? Um, but yeah, and then kayak dude was really cool. And then I was getting to the end and he was like, come on, you're nearly there. You're nearly there. And I was like, I can't see because my goggles are steamed up, but I will trust you, stranger. And then I was like, I knew then that I was nearly there because I could just about see the pontoon. And then I was like, oh, I'll swim to the pontoon and then I'll turn around and thank him. And I turned around and he wasn't there. And I was like, oh, <laughs> goodbye, friend. <laughs> And then I got, I didn't even, I don't even, I can't remember, it's all a blur. I can't remember if I got pulled out or not. But then I went to like lean against, there was like a buoy or a floaty thing in the water beside the pontoon. I went to lean on that to get the tether off. And then like three people leaned, like ran over and grabbed me like, don't fall in again. And I was like, no, I was just leaning on the thing to get the thing off my ankle. And they're like, all right, okay, just be careful. <laughs> I was like, I'm sorry. But yeah, anyway. It's an alright swim. Well, I don't know. I say now that it was an alright swim, but whatever I was doing, it was horrendous. I think it was worse than Bel for me. I think it was worse than Belfast, and I'm trying to remember that. Um, but yeah, the bike was. It was like, it's in Dublin, and Dublin's fairly flat until you get to Phoenix Park, and then it's all hills. And Why is Phoenix Park a hill? I don't know because it's Dublin. I don't know. But anyway, Phoenix Park is where the cycle and the run took place, so it was all hilly. Well, like the first half of the bike was uphill and then it was downhill, but you had to do two circuits of that, so it was uphill, downhill, uphill, downhill. Well, it was uphill, um, flat, downhill. But yeah. The downhill was great. I don't know, Annie, Annie was a bit scared, and we had two flat tyres, and like, yeah, the bike was very wobbly. Um, It was a bike that we hadn't used before, and beforehand we had said, like, oh, the tyres need pumped up. Uh, but they were like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. And then literally everyone that passed us on the bike was like, by the way, you have two flat tyres. And we were like, we know. <laughs> <laughs> we realised that we had a flat tyre. Sort of, there was a big hill and then sort of a gentler hill. Mm -hmm. um, and it was on the gentler hill because we were like, oh, well, this will be okay. This is pretty much flat. So we'll we'll look at the tyre and just make sure it's okay. Um, so... Louise got off and she checked the tire and she's like, "Oh, flip, that's flat, but we're gonna have to deal with it. But it's it's gonna be all right. Like it's it's okay." Um, and then we tried to get back on the bike and it took us about, I'm gonna say about two minutes, like ten attempts trying to get back on and push <laughs> forward. So we kept trying, but it, because it was on a hill, it was really hard to like. You didn't realize how much of a hill it was until yeah, you were trying until to get trying a bike to go started. Up. And then no, we, we just didn't stop. We were just like, no, we'll just keep going. We'll just like, cause Annie wanted to stop and try and like maybe ask someone for a puncture or get pair kit. And I was like, honestly, these guys are focused on finishing. They're not gonna, they're not yeah, gonna stop no and gonna offer help. us. Um, we might, we're just gonna have to deal with it. And she was really, she was sort of, she got herself really worked up about it. Yeah. Which, which sucked because I could tell that it, like it, 
you could tell in her performance that yeah. she was worked up about it. She was really, really tight and just. And I feel really I feel completely. sorry for the guys because I think they feel like they have so much pressure on yeah. them. Yeah, like they're sort of like honestly just relax. We're just gonna finish. I don't care where we come. We're just gonna finish. We're just gonna get over the line, okay? And we're gonna get over the line together. And that's gonna be fine. She's like, "How are you so calm?" And I was like, "Honestly, I don't know, but we're just gonna get through it, okay? Right? We're just gonna because." The way I do a triathlon is I focus on each bit individually. Yeah. I don't think of it as a full triathlon. I, I think, think that's a karate mindset because I was thinking of that on the bike. I was going like, oh, that's when was horrendous. Oh, I, that, has, that has definitely taken me like 40 minutes. I don't know how long. Like, yeah. That has taken me. Was like, and then no, I was like, that's no, swim no done. that's done. Swim is out. We're this on the bike, the bike now. We're focusing I, on this. Yeah. And like whenever I was on the bike, I wasn't thinking about the run at all. I was just mm-hmm. focusing on the bike, right, well, this is us. I did start thinking about the run at one point because my seat was, like, slightly too low because whenever they measured me for it, I was wearing flip-flops and not trainers. Oh, yeah, mine was too. And then I was like... I thought oh. you were talking about the seat and the seat was just so, so uncomfortable. uncomfortable. Well, there was that and then there was also, it was too low and then that made my knees cramp up. So I was like, I can't wait to run and stretch this out. <laughs> this is going to be so good. Um, but, yeah, we were saying that it was quite bad not badly organized but just not well organized for para because there was a really tight like hairpin bend yeah and trying to get a tandem bike around that it's like trying to get a bus around it. Yeah. <laughs> like and everyone was like, like we had to make sure there was no one behind us um just so we could because we had to swing right wrong we ended up on the grass and then onto the pavement that was halfway across the grass <laughs> and we had to go down the pavement and then we were halfway down the pavement we were like, excuse me sorry sorry and there was like a wee old man and a wee old lady walking their wee corgi Aww. and we were like you're gonna have to step on the grass so we can get past <laughs> because we couldn't get back onto the path because there was a big massive drop yeah um, so yeah, we just had to get them and move out of the way and then eventually we got ourselves onto the like the path again. But I was like, oh my word, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the other cyclists, they were a lot nicer than the other swimmers. Yeah. Because any time, like most of the time whenever another cyclist passed you, they were like, oh, you're doing great, come on, keep going. And you were like, thanks, as you passed me. <laughs> <laughs> it was that and you got two flat tyres. Thanks, mate. <laughs> we're doing our best. <laughs> we got golden inspiration too and I was like, no mate, just tired. Thanks. <laughs> was that on the bike? Yeah. Oh that's so cute. I wish there I was, got golden. There's so many enthusiastic people on the bike and it was great, but it was also kinda like hi. Yeah. The, the marshals were great though too. They were like so enthusiastic as well. Oh, they were like, so you're doing so great, I can't remember on. where it was, but there was one marshal. You know the way you do that? Like if you're watching someone, yeah. you do a clap. I find that so funny. And I was wetting myself on the bike. Just these people just, they were walking along and then just, they saw you coming. They just stopped and just went. That was, I did, I did like. I just did a wee clap and I, I was did, like, oh, you know, it's just, you're trying to be supportive, but it's just making me giggle. I did race bingo and that was one of them. <laughs> like, silence and then just alone. <laughs> and I was like, bingo! It's mostly, it's mostly guys that do that. It's mostly the lads that are out walking their dogs. They sort of, they're like, huh? Uh. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going. But we were cycling along and we saw a guy and he was running and... He just tripped over a cone and just fell flat on his face. And went, and like Louise was like, Did you see that? She doesn't know. I was like, Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> As if, yeah, no, yeah. I know you weren't planning to, but like, please don't throw me into a cone. <laughs> what do you think of the run then after the bike? See, running is my favourite. I, I love running. Yeah. And Annie, my guide, doesn't. I actually really enjoyed the cycle. I'm not gonna lie, I quite enjoyed it. I think if we didn't have flat tires, because there was mud guards in the back of the tandem, mm-hmm. and you could feel the mud guards just rubbing on the yeah. tire the whole time, um, which was really uncomfortable. Um, but no, like it was a good bike course. I'd loved. I want to do it again next year, but with a bike that has tires pumped up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but no, running's my favourite, and Annie doesn't like running, so I was sort of. I was trying to be positive, just like, come on, we're gonna get this finished. But yeah. at the same time, in my head, I was like, all these people are passing me, and I know I can, I could pass them. I could, I could be, I could either match them or beating them. Yeah. Um. Because by that own. point, you were out of the water a good, maybe, what, seven, ten minutes, minutes yeah. um, ahead of us, and then on the bike, the bike you caught us, but that's because <laughs> well, we don't tires. <laughs> yeah. Um. And then we got to the transition before the run and Paul was there, one of our coaches, and he was like, they're only about three minutes ahead of you. They're they're about three or four minutes ahead of you. You can catch them, you can catch them. I think they were lying because I'm pretty sure by my calculations, you were still about 
five, six minutes ahead of us, but whatever. So then we started the run, and I, of course, started the run too fast. <laughs> As you always do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to learn, but I just get excited. Um, but yeah, we caught you then at the top of the hill. Yeah. And to be Annie honest, was not in good yeah. shape. No. Because... <laughs> Um, obviously Louise saw you first. She was mm-hmm. like, oh, I see the girls. Oh, they look like they're struggling. Are they okay? Um, and I was kind of like, oh yeah, um, Annie just doesn't like the running. It's like, she finds it really tough. And then she was like, should we pass them? Would it really, would it really break their hearts if we passed? Them? Like, should we all run together? Like, she was, if you'd done that, like, if you'd done that, I would have been so mad. I would have just been like, just go. <laughs> I was like, look, we'll we'll take it. We're still on a bit of a hill here. We'll not kill ourselves on this hill, and we'll see if they can sort of if they're okay whenever they get to the top. But then we we were sort of going at a pace, and we were like, we're catching them anyway. <laughs> but as I ran past, I was like, Annie, come on, you're gonna be okay. You can do this. And I kind of looked at you, and I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, you, you get like I was sort of like I knew it was gonna happen. I knew you guys were gonna pass us on the run. It makes um, me feel happy because it's like, I can run and Chloe can swim. It's fine. <laughs> but I know that if you had, like, if you were with Louise and I was with, say, Georgina, my guide from the last one, we would, I don't know, you'd probably pass us. <laughs> or, like, you'd be, like, finished. Yeah. But, whatever. But, like, like I knew, I had it in my head, like, I knew that you were going to pass me. Um, but in Belfast, I, I had sort of... counted on it, actually. In Belfast, I, was... I had sort of, like, I had sort of... I think I was more annoyed in Belfast because I was like, this is our second lap and they haven't passed us yet. And then he's passed us and we were maybe like, I'd say 1k away yeah, from the finish. He's I us. was I was heartbroken and I got so annoyed. I was like, come on, we can just, come on, we're almost done. And she was like, I can't, I can't. I was like, come on. <laughs> I remember getting so annoyed at Belfast and just sort of having to calm myself down. Just be like, it's fine. It's not her fault. She's got a cramp. She's got a stitch. She's got a sore shoulder. It's fine. And yeah, but yesterday I'd sort of, accepted the fact that you guys were gonna pass us i just didn't expect it to be i didn't expect it to be that soon i was like we can maybe hold them off for a kilometer or two but it wasn't even the first kilometer no it was was it yeah okay that's not so bad i but we finished (laughs) i hadn't expected to pass you this time i kind of thought that um she had been working hard and i was like oh well that's okay. I mean, if we don't pass them, we don't pass them as long think, as they haven't gone too far. I think it's far. the transition that she hasn't practiced, like doing for, going from the bike to the run, because mm. that's, for people who haven't tried that, you should try it. Go, go for a cycle and then go for a run straight after because your legs are like jelly and everything just starts to burn because you're using completely different muscles. Yeah, it's always my calves. Yeah. Well, that's down here at your ankles, isn't it? Yeah. Your shins and stuff. The front, yeah. Um, or they, your back, the back. Yeah. It's my calves and my shins and like just down the side that like just cr- just seizes up yeah. <laughs> and I'm like can't work my legs but it's fine it's fine <laughs> I'm okay yeah well, that's, that's I think that's Annie's problem like I'm sort of used to it because like at the gym we would do like the stairmaster and then do the treadmill or the bikes and then do the treadmill so like I don't find it that hard at all really yeah like, like the it's, transition. It's, t- it's not normal it doesn't feel good but it's yeah. like you know that you're not gonna die yeah or like break your it's, legs. Like or... it's really just for like the first couple hundred meters. Like by the time I was out onto the pavement, because the transition zone was in a field. Nah, my legs were like jelly the full way around. But then again, you were running fast. I wasn't that going fair, at any sort yeah. of speed. But yeah, we finished. We got a medal. We got a hoodie. We got lots of free things. We got a tile. We solid we... job. That's why we do triathlons. Yep. Just to free things for free things and to swim and cycle and run away from all our problems and responsibilities <laughs> title right there yeah. swim bike and run away from your problems so what else um so mum and dad are away on holidays tomorrow so we've got a house to I'm ourselves a bit, i'm a bit sad because it means that if we're going into the town or anything we have to get the bus and we have yeah. to walk and we don't have any chance of a lift home even from the end of the road so if it <sighs> rains we just get wet yeah and no one will be here being like, do you want us to put the fire on for you? Do you want us to put dinner on for you? Nope, that's not going to happen. Yeah, we're fending for ourselves. And I mean, some people will be like, well, that's what it'll be like whenever you move out. If I move out, I am living right next to a bus stop. I am yeah. not living two miles away from it. Yeah. Like, as much as I love it out here, I just don't like being so isolated from public transport. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure we'll cope. We'll have a house party. Yeah, like, we've done it before. Just... It's uh, it's just the rain. Like, rain just makes you miserable. And if you get wet on the way into the town, 
you're just miserable all day. Whereas if you're coming back out, it's not as bad because you're like, well, I'm almost home and at home I have spare clothes. There's like, you know, it's warm and stuff like that. But if you're going in, you're kind of like, I have to take these off to go to the gym and I'll have to put it back on again. I think I might just bring spare shorts or something if... So that if I do get completely soaked, at least I'll have something dry yeah, to put on. I might do that too. Just to have some. I'd even just leave them at the gym if I don't need them. Just yeah. put them in a locker. Well, let's do that. That's actually a good plan. Just steal a locker and just be like, this is my locker and I will keep my spare claws in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do yeah. you ever get attached to a locker? Yeah, I have my locker. I have my, I have my own locker. But only in the gym changing In the swimming changing rooms, I'm kind of like, eh, whatever. But in the in gym, the gym one, one, it's like, like, that's mine. I don't even know what number it is to know, but I know that someone took it for like a whole week and I was like, I am not okay. That is my locker. And so, someone better be taking, whoever that is, might better be taking good care of it. What if they put their stinky shoes in it? <gasps> I did give it a good sniff whenever I got it back. <laughs> I was like, did they take good care? they did it doesn't smell it smells okay it smells just like a clean locker everything is fine but yeah i did i wasn't i wasn't overly happy um we got a question what was the question um would you rather have finger sized legs or leg sized fingers um and that's from emily um does that mean like are we talking thickness or length both i think so you'd have like what five legs coming out your hands yeah Imagine how fast you could run with five legs. But it would be weird because you'd be walking in your hands. But it would be like full legs. So you would have... Like from your thumb... Would your your thumb count? No, because it's not a finger. So you would have ten legs then? Yeah, because you'd have your normal legs. Yeah, so you'd have ten legs. Yeah. My word, you'd be worse than a spider. Oh, sorry. I can't get comfy. We're sitting on the floor. This You're was the one who suggested idea. the floor. Um, I would like to have finger-sized legs just because I think it would be really funny because you could just titter around. Just titter around. Imagine how strong your fingers would have to be though to hold your entire body. But also it wouldn't be as weird because you could you could just cover it up and just sit in a wheelchair. That's true. Just the wee titsy little legs. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Imagine though you could just sit on top of a keyboard have... and type out your emails. Would they have feet on the end? Like, you wouldn't just have fingers as legs, would you? Or, yeah, it's like leg-sized fingers or finger-sized legs. Yeah. So it would have a wee tiny foot. <gasps> you could wear doll shoes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the feet kind of... That means you would have, like, a mil... Imagine having to count to ten. What do you mean? Like, or, like, use your... Because f- you know the way you use your fingers and your fingers How would you cut your counting? fingernails? If you had leg-sized fingers, how would you cut your fingernails? Just chew them. But they'd be massive. They'd be, like, foot-sized. Yeah, but look at your, like, imagine your heel, right? That will be the size of your your nail. No, it wouldn't. But leg-sized fingers. Yes, leg-sized fit. So it would just be, like, a normal leg on your hand. No, but it's not, because it's leg-sized fingers, not legs for fingers. Leg-sized fingers. Okay, right, okay, well, yeah, but, I mean, you could still just chew it off. <laughs> <laughs> I think... Be some good eating. <laughs> <laughs> just chew on that. Like, oh, that could keep mm. you going for a day. <laughs> 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 I think I would prefer to have finger-sized legs, please, yeah. thank you. <laughs> yeah. I did, I did, like, I read that earlier, and I was sort of like, no, I need to think about this. Yeah. It's like... It's one of those questions that people just randomly throw out to you and then you're just sort of like, no, but, no, but what are the implications of each of these? Yeah, that's what I always want to know. I'm always like, what? In my head, I wrote out a week pros and cons list. <laughs> but, yeah. but also, you know what else I thought whenever I was like, whenever we were getting questions, whenever, well, whenever we got that question, I was like, but like, trees. Trees are weird. Why are trees weird? Because they're tall. Is this the sunflower thing again? Because No, but like trees, they're like all trees are different and they're different sizes and stuff and they have different number of branches and leaves and stuff and the branches start like at different heights. Yeah. How do they know? Is it not just they reach Oh, well, I don't know. Because if they're in the same like say field and they're both the same age, like one tree could start off growing branches like a meter high and the other one will wait until it's like two meters high or three meters high but like how do they know but i know that different 
species of trees. No, but I mean, if they're the same species, like, it's just... It's not to do with sunlight. I know, but if it's in the field and they're spread out and they're planted but, at the same time, then they're going to get the same amount of sunlight, Judith. <laughs> Slightly different, though, maybe. <laughs> but uh, I need a tree, people. I need a tree person to come and explain this to me because my wee head can't take it. That is... Like, like, how do they know how many branches to grow to? I know it's like about it's energy, energy, but like, oh, how do they know when to like, when to say, oh, I'm gonna grow some big branches here, and then I'm gonna grow like ten small ones, and then fifteen extra small ones. But like, they, like, they don't. They just grow normal branches, and then as the tree gets older and bigger, the branches get bigger. So it's not like it decides, oh, I'm gonna grow a big branch. No, but it, it just gets bigger. No, but then. There's littler branches at the very ends and stuff. Yeah. And they grow off it. So they are littler branches and it just stems off the big branch. But they still get branch. bigger. I know, but it's still a littler branch whenever they're trying to grow it. <laughs> Jim, don't laugh. <laughs> it's a serious question. How do trees know to do this? I don't know. I wish I could do it. If you're a... <laughs> <laughs> if you're a tree expert or you know a tree expert, please let us know. Please. Why do trees grow branches at different heights and yeah. do they know how many branches do they they're going to grow? Like is it in the wee seed? Does the wee seed have all the DNA and like, Imagine. you're going to be a big tree. <laughs> you're going to be 20 foot high. You're going to have great tree bu- tree house capabilities. You're gonna- Tree houses are basically just like having a coffin in a tree. It's like, a- it's like putting a body inside a body. Oh, that's weird. <laughs> Because <laughs> oh. tree houses just dre- dead, trees dead trees in a tree. I feel like carrying around a dead body. Oh. <laughs> what are we doing oh. to nature? Poor but also, tree, trees. Houses, tree houses are really cool. They anyway, are. I'm sorry, trees, for building tree houses in you out of your like dead friends, but like also, <laughs> it's class. Like the hours of enjoyment I would get out of a tree house is just thank you, thanks, trees. <laughs> Tree houses are forever ruined. I'm sorry. Um, we did a poll on on Twitter. I forgot what it was called there. Um, asking what you wanted. And oh yeah, one of them was like guests. Yeah, we'll we'll talk about that first then. Um, yeah, one of them you wanted guests, so we were thinking of maybe getting some of you guys on the show podcast. Um, we wouldn't. We'd maybe do it during the week before leading up to yeah. the podcast just to make sure the audio worked, but. Like, if that's something you want to do, get in touch. Give us I'm going to say email. Yeah, email, yeah. Hold on, let me check for certain what the email is. Talk for a second about yeah. how so, we would do it. Yeah, so, like, we would maybe sort of contact you during the week, maybe by Skype or something like that, because the audio quality should be good on that. And, I don't know, just sort of chat with you for a bit, maybe ask a couple of weird questions. Maybe we'll have a wee discussion about trees and how trees know how many... That just, that boggles my mind. Boggles. Boggles. Um, Boggles so yeah, our mind. email address is skit.twins at gmail.com. We'll put it in the description of this. It's also on our Twitter bio. Twitter bio. Yeah. So, um, But yeah, uh, I know that we've been chatting to a couple of our friends who sort of thought it would be cool, which we thought was cool because people thought it would be cool to be on our podcast. Yeah. So that makes us feel a bit good. Very nice. Um, the other thing that you voted for was draft tweets. Tweets. See, what, what time are we at? Do we have time to do it? Um, good. 33 minutes, not, not going too bad. So, sorry, I realise that I, like, every, like occasionally we will say the time during the podcast. And I know that if I'm listening to a podcast, I hate that. Especially when I'm at the gym. Yeah. And, like, you're on the treadmill or something that's like, oh, we've only been recording this podcast for 10 minutes. And you're like, are you serious? I've only been at the gym for 10 minutes. It's um, always on the steps and stuff. But I listen at 1.25 speed. Or 1.5 yeah. speed. And then, Which is even worse, though, because then they're like, we've only been going 10 minutes. And it's like, that's, that's like, like five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do that all the time. But yeah, draft five. tweets was another one that, that we, we got asked to do. Yeah, we're not doing politics. No. No political tweets. No. No politics. Apart from, on this. apart from bad Northern Ireland. Bad. Yeah. Bad. Um, I actually, I don't know when this is from, but um, it's it's slightly political, but don't worry. Um, I said, I pure love when UK politics kicks off. It makes me miss Stormont. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't... It's from ages ago, but... And I can't remember what was going on. Should we on, maybe but... sort of background it a bit, just in case someone listens to this in the future and it's like, what? So it's 2018. It's September. Northern Ireland hasn't had a government for nearly 600 days. 
Yeah, it's pretty much. It's like, but then my laser stall getting paid, right? That's all I'm saying. It's it's like if you left a bunch of teenagers on their own in a classroom. In a classroom. Like they're gonna be mad for a wee while, and then they're eventually gonna sort of be like, okay, no, we need some structure here. Yeah, or like, <laughs> yeah, but it's like we're it's like they're left. We've been left alone in a classroom, but there's other teachers and stuff outside in the corridor. So everything can go a wee bit mad, but like you don't want them to come in and start ruling over us. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but then it's sort of getting to the point now where we're like, no, but I actually want to do something constructive, please. Yeah. Anyway. Please other tra- stop kicking it. <sighs> I'm really uncomfortable. Um. Okay. So most kids, when their parents go out, house party, me. Ice cream for dinner! Or cereal for dinner. Or cereal, yeah. Um, I wanted to make go well and cheers a thing in my family and friends because of a podcast I listened to called Tail Enders, which is about cricket. Um, I went on to say, I still know nothing about cricket, but I really I really admire everyone's enthusiasm in that podcast. <laughs> <laughs> still don't understand it, but, you know, the enthusiasm is great. Um, I just checked my bank balance and almost swore out loud in front of my mother. I hate being poor. And now I'm even poorer, poorer than ever. And now I'm even poorer than when I made that tweet. So that's nice. Do you want to read out yeah. some of yours? So mine are just a wee bit weird. I mean, I have some weird um, ones too, but I don't want to out-weird you. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so I found out that beck beans aren't actually becked. They are stewed. What? Yeah. So as in like they're cooked. Boil? No, what's stewed? <laughs> like they're like cooked in the sauce kind of thing. Hold on, right. Stew is done on a stove yeah. and a casserole is done in an oven. Yeah. So yeah, baked beans are stewed, but honestly, stewed beans sounds highly unappetizing. Yeah. Um another one I think I was sort of tweeting like sort of like not sad things, but sort of maybe sort of like oh, I need to get a job and things like that because it was like Sunsets and Mars are blue apparently. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> just to cheer yourself yeah. up. Aww. And then just a random one is, we can't sneeze in our sleep. Can you yawn in your sleep though? I think I, I asked that and someone told me you can, but it's very rare. I also have some random questions um, that I've, I, I didn't tweet them. I don't know why I didn't tweet them. I think I it was just kind of like, but do eyebrows count as facial hair? So does everyone have facial hair? Yeah. Ooh. I don't think they do. Because I mean, people maintain them like. But what about your eyelashes too, then? I suppose. And your nose hairs. Yeah, but they're they're sort of inner hairs though. Nose hairs they're supposed to be on the inside. Not for everybody. (laughs) They're supposed to be on the inside. (laughs) Um, but the letter S in lisp. There's a letter S in lisp, and that's really unfair. It's funny, but it's also sad. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Also, apartments. Are like really close together. So why are they called apartments? Is meant like a negative, like a part, like so maybe it translates as a part, a part not, <laughs> a part meant to be. <laughs> um, um, I have another draft tweet here, and it's I was I was in a cafe earlier, and I heard a little girl ask her mum, "Mummy, how do we know what's real?" And I haven't stopped thinking about it since. But there's so much going on about that right now, like about simulations and stuff. Like it's mad, but like. But how do you know what's real? Well, I suppose like, no. But like, what? What if you woke up? What if this it's is like a, the matrix? What if you're in a coma? Oh <gasps> my word! What if you have amnesia, right? But like, if you if you do have amnesia, whenever you remember, do you remember that you had amnesia? Like, do you remember that you forgot? And do you remember what it felt like to have forgotten? Or do you just kind of forget the amnesia? But does that mean that you have amnesia again because you forgot and you had amnesia? Can you say amnesia again? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I said it enough in that sentence. <laughs> I just think you sort of started to lose it at the end there. Do you want me to try again? I'll try and like condense it a bit. Right, I'll read out the actual tweet, right? If you had if you have amnesia, do you remember that you had it when you remember again? Have you had amnesia? <laughs> <laughs> That sounded like the start of an ad for like PPI or something. <laughs> Have you had amnesia? <laughs> you often find yourself forgetting things. 
after being hit on the head. No, um, Do you have amnesia? <laughs> <laughs> um, every decision you have, I'm going to change this so it's, it works for a podcast. So every decision you have made up to this point has led to you listening to this podcast right now. So just just think about that. Do you need to reevaluate anything? No, I think this is good. a great decision. I think you're you're very welcome here. Thank you for coming. I'm st- I'm pretty sure I'm still it from a P seven game of tag. Stay away from me. <laughs> All right, enough. We could have just been playing like a lifelong game of tag, just tagging. Just me and you. But you can't tip your tipper. Oh, you're right enough. Did anyone else have that rule? Was that was that just like a legit? No, rule? I think that's that I think that's a legit rule. It's like it's one of the unwritten rules of life. Like, don't eat smelly food on public transport. Oh, that's a solid rule. It, everyone needs to follow that. Someone was eating like roast chicken flavored crisps. On the oh, bus. I can't stand like crisps. I don't mind sour cream and like, onion and stuff. Oh, sour cream and onion is the worst. Roast chicken was actually okay. It just it's made me bad. really want roast chicken crisps. <laughs> and then, but then someone like did the well, not the worst, but one of the one of the bad bad ones. And they opened a packet of watsits. Mm. And watsits are nice, but they I, smell like feet. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't like fruit being opened. For it being eaten, like oh, apples and stuff are okay, but see like if bananas. Eat, see what you see if anyone eats banana near me, I will bug. <laughs> <laughs> like it's rough Hate enough whenever you're traveling a couple of hours in a bus, but then someone open opens like a banana or like some other kind of food that you just can't stand the smell mm-hmm. of, and you're just like monster uh, munch is awful. But that's pickled onion flavor. Uh, no, can't stand that tuna tuna sandwiches. That's just everyone knows that you do not eat tuna. Yeah. But crisps seems to but be tuna one. Tuna is decent, but like I wouldn't like I love tuna, but also I wouldn't eat it on public transport. I wouldn't eat it in public. I would try to avoid it. Yeah. I used to have tuna sandwiches at school all the time though, so can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> but they get soggy whenever you put it in sandwiches too. Yeah. Which was sad. There was always one end of my sandwich that was always pure ugh. bogging. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I didn't mean to make it gross, but I mean, you know, that's that's the reality. It's not, it's it. not overly gross though, like compared to what we we have talked about in podcasts. That's so, true. You know, we're going good. We're going good. Um, yeah, I think we've covered everything. I don't think we have anything else left to. No, I don't say. Think so. We went to see Christopher Robin. Did we talk about that last time? Yeah, I think so. Oh, Winnie the Pooh is great. Winnie the Pooh is great. You and McGregor though. That accent. What a guy. Wait, it was English accent or a Scottish accent? Like Both. One. Yeah. They're so It's good. one of those voices that you're just like, no, 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 just, just keep talking. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. Excuse me, film. Just ignore those people there. Just just sit there and do a monologue. Give you and more lines. <laughs> just do a monologue right there. But although Winnie the Pooh's voice is so good Oh, too. it just makes me smile. I love the wee jokes. Just instead of like, thank you, officer. Yeah. It's just like, thank you, orifice. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think my favourite is, um, may I have a balloon? No, you can't have a balloon. It, it would make, make me very, very happy. happy. <laughs> I am definitely going to use that. If Just I'm... be a little bit less exuberant, you. Exuberant. <laughs> <laughs> that one's my favourite. Oh, poo. <laughs> Silly old bear. I think one of my favourite things that you've ever said is you used to have a... Uh, Cereal bowl, cereal with, bowl with honey the poo, poo on it. it. And I said everything tastes better with poo. <laughs> it was really funny. Mine had Eeyore on it, but then it got broken. But now you have another one with Eeyore. I know, but it's Eeyore. not the same because it used to be... Like, like Eeyore's bum would be on one side of the bowl and, and then, then the opposite side of the bowl so would be his head. So it looked like he was sticking right through the bowl and it was so cute. And mine was like Winnie the Pooh doing that. I don't know if mine is broken or mine is just somewhere in a shed. I think it's somewhere whenever in we shed. moved. I don't think it broke. Maybe it did break. I don't know. I hope it didn't. Yeah. I always liked Eeyore, though. I don't know. I I don't think I ever had a favourite. I, think... I just wanted all of them. Yeah. I like. I think I like Tigger. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I think you liked Tigger because you were very bouncy. Not that I was a depressed child. I just liked Eeyore's floppy ears. Yeah. <laughs> I just have a thing about you liked, floppy you ears. Liked his, you liked his removable tail, too. Yeah. I like rabbits, yeah. too, for their floppy ears. But rabbits' eyes are really creepy. Have you ever, like, go on to Google image search and search, like, any animal's eyes, like, dogs, dogs' eyes are cute too, but, like, rabbits' eyes, birds' eyes, fish' eyes. Sheep's eyes are weird. Yeah. 
But like if like and just stare at them for a long time. But I think that's maybe just us because like I find human eyes a bit weird. But that's just because I never make eye contact, or if I do make eye contact, I can't see their eyes. And it's not until I get up really close to people that I see their eyes, and I'm like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I was thinking, about this I can thing. see your pores. <laughs> I tweeted about that the other day, by which I mean two weeks ago, probably. <laughs> um, about how I realised that I never make eye contact with people. Yeah. Like, it just makes me feel... Even now, I'm kind of... Well, no, I'm making eye contact with you. With I'm not. Eyes. I'm not making I'm sort of yeah, slightly to the right of you. Yeah. But, like, I could, like... I could never look at teachers in the eye. I always would have looked, like, over their left shoulder. Or, yeah. like, at their chin. And then, like, sometimes it would have, would have been like, look at me! And it's like, no! <laughs> yeah. Like, I think it's just whenever, like, because we have nystagmus, I think it's whenever I look at people's faces, I try to look them in the eye, and then my eyes shake that much, mm-hmm. so it just distorts their face. Yeah. And it's just kind of like, no, no, you look like, I don't know, like a melted face. But I also feel really awkward about it because kids always have, and I mean, I know it's a kid, like, kids just sort of speak their mind and they just sort of say what they think, but it's like, your eyes are wild weird! And then that makes me feel weird about like looking at kids and stuff in the yeah. eye because it's like, you're going to say something about my eyes <laughs> moving and I, I can't be bothered to explain it today, please. <laughs> I know, but like, it's even worse if it's adults though because adults don't say anything. Yeah, they just, you can just feel them staring at you and yeah. you're like, oh yeah, sorry, I have nystagmus, my eyes move. move but, then you say, but then you say <laughs> words like that, you're like, for us, like nystagmus is just, it's just nystagmus. Yes. My albinism is just albinism. Whereas to other people, they're just kind of like, know what? Yeah. And you're like, oh, I have to explain that to you. <laughs> Look, I have a boss to catch, okay? <laughs> Can you just tell me where, like, number 10 is, where stand 10 yeah. is? <laughs> but no, then you have to go sort of be like, Look, my eyes shake. I can't do anything about it, okay? Everything's weird. It's all blurry. Bloody, bloody, blah. Stand 10? <laughs> <laughs> can't see too good. Where's stand 10? Thank you. Um. But yeah, eyes are weird. Do you ever look at your own eyes and reflect in your in the mirror? Yeah, but then mirror. everything just sort of zooms out and then it's just kind of like, ooh, ooh. But do you ever, like, I always used to do it, like, um... I would take a picture of my eye and then look at it and just sort of zoom in and, like, the iris, like, a colour bit and just sort of be like, oh, pretty. I used to, like, stare at my reflection in the dark whenever I would have gone to the bathroom in the dark, um, in the old house. And, because you would have walked past the mirror. And I would have just, like, stared. And because I was, like, far away like say a meter or two away from the mirror because it was over the sink and then it was sort of in half light yeah your eyes just look black and yeah, i used to the... stare at my reflection until it freaked me properly out until i was like it's gonna move without me real like without me moving yeah and then i would have ran right back upstairs and i think that's just sort of shows that i've always sort of got a thrill out of being Be scared because <laughs> i would have done it i would have been like no i shouldn't do that because it'll freak me right out <laughs> No, but then you stand and do it, and you do it for a bit too long, and then, like, you're imagine, like, you're thinking, oh, something's gonna move without me. I and then you see, and then you see something, and you're like, (laughs) (laughs) and your heart's going ninety, like, (laughs) just, (gasps) you're on the way, going, please don't follow me. (laughs) But then you're halfway up the stairs, and you're like, I can hear footsteps that are mine. My heart's pumping just thinking about it. <laughs> go try that tonight, okay? Just go stare at yourself in a mirror until you just you think you're having like a wee out of, bo- out of body experience. Yeah. Until it doesn't look like you. And you're... Unless you're easily scared or have a heart condition. In yeah. which case, please don't do that. Yeah, no. <laughs> Probably if you live alone, don't do it either. Because you might just like not, not sleep. sleep. <laughs> but yeah, eyes are weird. That's, that's not what we're leaving the podcast on. Eyes are weird. Unless you have anything else to add, I don't know, that just kind of popped into my brain. Yeah, continue to swim, cycle and run away from your problems, or get away from your problems in whatever way possible, but, you know. I got really annoyed. I mean, it'll catch up on you eventually, but I mean, you can try your best, and that's what I do. That's why it's called the triathlon, because you try your best (laughs) to swim, cycle and run away from your problems. I have cracked the code, give me a medal. So you get a medal for that, and for... Being a visually impaired visually person impaired. who travels all by themselves and yeah. doesn't cry. Yeah. <laughs> Anything else you want to add? I was going to say something there whenever you were speaking, but you, you sort of continued over me and now I've forgotten what it was. Well, it didn't so. continue over you because you didn't say anything. I did. I was like, I was I know, so annoyed. I, I, I can't remember what I was still, annoyed about. I was still saying my wee sentence. But you left a pause where I could have... 
There's like a comma in a sentence. Ah. What did you do? I hit my chin and banged my teeth together. Oh. So they went, hang, they clicked together. Oh. Oh, uh, don't. No, I don't like that sound either. There but anyway. An- there was another sound that I heard in the podcast, or they were talking about it. I think it was something like about bones being grinded together. No, don't talk about that. That's just, no. We managed well not to gross anything could be gross and stuff. We're not going to do it, okay? Just don't grind your teeth together. I can uh, see you do that. Don't. No, I right, don't gonna, grind my teeth together. Gonna, okay, it looked like that's what you were doing. No, I was going, hang, 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 hang. <laughs> my teeth were not touching. <laughs> but yeah, if you want to be a guest, if you want to get in touch, if you want to... If you have any weird questions, questions, even just like normal questions, like how much can you see? Or, I don't know, how much is that doggy in the window? How much is that doggy in the window? Probably about a tenner. The one with the waggly tail? Yeah. Probably about a tenner. I mean, inflation's hitting now, so maybe 20. 30. I want it. Okay. Why would they keep a dog in a window? Do you think it was a shop or just like someone's house and the guy was walking past and he just went, How much is that dog, the one in the window with the waggly tail? I don't know, I was going like, to say, is it not, it was maybe just a toy rather than an actual dog? But what? Like a toy dog with a waggly a tail that wags. I mean, they have those Chinese cats that wave their arm. Like, what's the point in that? They're 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 lucky. Maybe a waggy dog tail toy is. Can I Google lucky. it? You can as long as you're quick because right, okay. I don't know what I'm gonna be saying. But if you wanna get in touch, um, Our while do, shush, I'm trying to tell them how to contact us. Okay? Yes. So if you wanna get in touch about any, if you have a dog for sale that has a waggly tail, um, we can, I don't know collect that for you but it's skit underscore twins or skit under slash twins depending on which twin you favor <laughs> <laughs> um and that's that's what we are on twitter and instagram we're using facebook more now to post things so that's just facebook.com slash squit squit twins squit twins <laughs> skit twins um and yeah email is skit dot twins at gmail.com so there's plenty of ways to get in touch. You can leave a comment on a YouTube video if you want to do that too. You can leave a reply on the podcast or rate and review us. Could you please do that actually if you're on if you're on iTunes, just give us a wee five stars or four stars and then explain why you gave us that. Yeah. Judith, so you're looking at me as if you have something to say. Um wagging dogs tails aren't lucky, but they show that dogs are happy or content. Okay, that doesn't really answer our question. It doesn't, no. But at least we know that if the tail was wagging, then the dog in the window was very happy. That's good. So then why would you be trying to sell a dog that's happy where it is in the window? But maybe, that's what I'm saying, maybe the dog was just in the window and then a guy just came along and was like, I want to buy your dog. I would punch him in the face. Yeah, tell him to go home. Um, but yeah, at the end of the last podcast, we gave you something to say if you listened the whole way to the end, but I can't remember what that was and no one sent it to us. So that's a bit sad. Thanks guys. Um, no, thank you really for listening though. Yeah. (laughs) That sounded really weird. But, um, yeah, if, if you got to the end of this podcast, just suggest a price for the dog in the window. Yeah. (laughs) Can be US dollars, Australian dollars, Canadian dollars, pounds. Buttons. Euros, buttons. Yep, you can offer us buttons. I don't get that Cadbury's ad where she goes in and buys a big bar of chocolate for like buttons and unicorn toys. Oh, how much did that shopkeeper have lost out if everybody I went down and paid with buttons? Like, he must be making a mint from his wee corner shop to be able to give her a big bar of chocolate <laughs> for, just buttons. For, for buttons. And then people to give a unicorn back his change. I think oh that unicorn. It's a class wee thing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> take care, be good, make good choices. Until next time. Go well. Goodbye. Wee. Peace and love, etc. Mm.